Today, I'm gonna to be cutting door hinges and a solid core door. As you can see, I have two doors here on the table. This top one is a solid core door and the bottom one underneath it is a hollow core door. So I'm gonna be replacing the hollow core door, which was for a closet and replacing it with a solid core. And the reason for that is for this particular project, I want a door that's a bit more sturdy that can help protect valuables inside that closet. And a solid core door is definitely more capable of doing that. Whereas a hollow core, you could easily just like kick through that door or if you apply enough force to it, especially with a pry bar, you can easily break it and get inside. Of course, no door is uh, absolutely perfect or completely safe, but a solid core door for this particular purpose is going to be a lot better than the hull core is. All right, so here we have the hull core door, and this is the original hinge location. These are just my practice attempts um, using the template to make sure that I understand how it works and to get my proper depth before I cut my solid core. So all the ones with screw holes in them are the original hinge locations that I need to precisely transfer over to the solid core door. And if I don't get it precise, then it's not gonna be able to fit in the opening since the door hinge locations are already cut out on the door frame itself because I'm just replacing a door. So that's kind of the hardest part about just replacing a door. If you don't get it precisely lined up, you're not gonna be able to fit the door in there. So if I just shift it, if I get like a millimeter off here, then I go take this door up there and it's not gonna be able to attach correctly. It's not gonna fit in that opening correctly. So I need to make sure that these locations get precisely transferred over. Now, of course, I don't have to then go cut the door frame side, so I only have to do basically half a project here. All right, to cut my hinges, I'm gonna use a Miles Craft door hinge jig, and this jig comes with several different templates you can drop in for the mortises. So the one I'm gonna be using is the three and a half inch hinge uh, mortise because I have a three and a half inch door hinge that's gonna be going on the door. So all I would have to do is go ahead and stick it in there just like this. And I'm ready to attach it to the door. Now, if you have a different size hinge, let's say you have a four and a half inch, then I drop my four and a half in. Or if you have a much smaller one, like a two and a half, then you drop that one in. This particular jig also comes with the ability to do uh, strike plates and latch plates as well. You can see here, got latch plate one, and this one says strike plate, and here's another latch plate over here as well. So this jig includes everything. Um, this, I believe, is their most expensive model. I think it's about $40 for this uh, particular jig, but they have a much more basic one that does three inch and three and a half inch uh, hinges only, and it's only $15. All right, so I mentioned that there's a $15 model, which is their entry level model, and it's this one. And you can see the difference here between the two jigs and how the uh, templates look. So obviously this mortise is way bigger. It does not change cutting out the, the hinge. All right, this is still gonna be the same, but you can see how it attaches differently and you don't have quite as many options as the more expensive version has. Now, for the more expensive one, you do have to select your door size, but it does allow you to do different size doors. So in this particular case, I'm gonna be doing an inch and uh, three eighths inch door. So I'm going to pull up on these, rotate them to the one and three eighths inch door. All right, and now that they're both selected, when I go to put the hinge on, these flat areas are going to rest on the bottom side of the door, and then the cutout portion will be right there. And I'll show you what that's gonna look like here in a second. All right, so before you can cut your hinges, you will have to determine the exact location wherever you need to go. In this case, with the Miles Craft, um, the most expensive version comes with this nice little chart here, depending on what size hinge you're using. So if you got a two and a half, three inch, three and a half. In our particular case, we're gonna do three and a half. It will tell you, you know, where the A, B, and C hinge is located. And in this case, you're gonna start from the top of the door and you want seven inches down. And then it tells you where the center line of that hinge will be. So in this case, the A hinge will be from the top of the door, eight and three quarter inches from the top of the door will be the center line of that hinge. And you can see it represented here in this little diagram and all the instructions are here. It's very self-explanatory of how to use this template and how to use this jig overall. If I were cutting a door fresh and I was you know, installing a brand new door, then I would go with that chart. But in my particular situation, since I'm replacing a door where the uh, hinges already exist as far as their, uh, their, their cuts in the frame, 
I need to make it match up exactly with the old door so it matches where the frame location is as well. So I'm not going to go off of the chart just because there is that possibility where it's just that like millimeter or eighth of an inch off. And so I'm going to take the old doors locations and transfer them directly to my new door. Now when I put the two doors on top of each other, I found out that the new door is just slightly shorter than the old door. So I lined them up. Um, where the top edges are the same in height and then the bottom edge on this door is just a little bit shorter That's okay. I'm willing to have a little extra gap down at the bottom, but I don't want to have it screwed up at the top So as you can see the two doors are lined up. I'm using a straight edge here all right, my line is transferring the location. Now, for the top hinge, according to the template, or the chart, I should say, it's supposed to be seven inches, and then the middle line would be eight and three quarters. So right now, there's seven inches, there's eight and three quarters. However, that does not line up. You see, this line is where my original door hinge location is on the side. So that is, 1 16th of an inch off. So if I were to cut it here, then my uh, hinge is gonna be shifted 1 16th of an inch to my right, which means the middle point will be shifted, right? And everything's gonna be off basically. So that's why I'm not going off of the chart and I'm going off of what is actually on the original door itself and transferring that location to my new door. Okay, that is it for how to cut the hinges, but I still have some more to do with this door, so I'm gonna move on. So at this point, what I need to do is I'm gonna be installing an electronic deadbolt on this door. Um, this process would also apply if you're just installing any normal door handle as well. So it's gonna be the same type of uh, mechanism that needs to be used or the same tools that are gonna be used, and uh, you're gonna make the same hole. So in my case, I am cutting this hole for a deadbolt. Um, I need to use my latch plate here, that is my one inch by two and a quarter inch latch plate uh, template. So that fits right there. You can see it's a little, got a little bit extra room, but that's for the router bit. So that's the one I need. It's gonna attach the same way that we do it for the hinges. You just need to mark your center line and then screw it into the door. Okay, so I have my center line marked for the center of my deadbolt. It happens to be 44 inches from the top of the door, and I've lined this up as best as I can. Now I'm going to attach the template to it. As you can see, I'm still marking it for inch and three eighths uh, thickness. And I'm just going to attach it here to the side, just like what you do on the hinges. All right, we're going to use the router in the same way that I did on the hinges, but in this situation, I have adjusted the depth down an extra 16th of an inch, and that's just because it needs to go a little bit deeper for the uh, base plate of the deadbolt. It's just got a little more depth than the hinge does. Yeah, I'm going to put my deadbolt in base plate first and I'm going to check here look down on it and it is below the depth so I know it's going to sit in there it's not going to push out and be above the uh, the whip of the door here and now I'm also going to mark my hole locations because they will be useful here in a second all 
right. Okay, at this point, I need to cut the hole for the deadbolt to go into, and I need to cut the hole that the handle will go on for your normal doors. So in my case, though, I won't have a handle. This is just for the deadbolt assembly. So what I have here is this is just a simple Ryobi uh, jig that allows you to cut both of those. Right here is your big hole for the assembly, and then here on the end is for your latch. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this on here. I'm gonna line up these two holes with the pencil marks I just made. And using the screws that come with my deadbolt that hold the latch in the door, I'm going to attach the jig, or template I should say, in the place. Okay, at this point I am done cutting the holes for the latch mechanism. Now at this point for a normal door, this would essentially be done. You'd be ready to go hang this up and install your hardware. But for my particular project, there is one extra thing I want to do. And I want to add some air vents to this solid core door. And the reason for that is for the particular project, I want some airflow into that small little closet that's going to be installed on. Um, and there happens to be an AC vent right there in the hallway nearby. And so I want to get that airflow in there since I can't go and put an actual dedicated line uh, or AC vent into the closet itself. So this is the next best way to get some more airflow into that closet and help the, the room stay a little more climate controlled. All right, so what I got here is some uh, two inch air vents and I'm gonna do is take my hole saw and uh, this pack only came with six. Unfortunately, I would prefer having eight so I could put four on each side of the door. But I only came with six and I didn't want to go buy a second pack and have uh, 12 total and then end up with a bunch of them laying around that I have no use for. So I'm going to make do with uh, essentially three per side here. So we're going to have three vents total. And what I'm going to do is I've already marked where I'm going to put two at the bottom. So I'm going to have two right here. And I'm going to use my hole saw here. I'm going to cut these out and then I will do the one that's going to be up top. All right, so that is everything I'm going to do to this door. So at this point, I have only stuck the vents in door just to dry fit them in place. They are not permanently installed yet. I still need to sand and paint this door before I go and attach all the hardware to it. The next video I release will be the project in which this door will be used for. So if you want to see what the final product looks like, make sure to click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and we'll see you next time on the DIY Garage.